so your paper uh, as a reminder starts with that sensory lead that sets the tone and the mood of the paper is positive and it introduces the uh, interviewee so um, I hope you've got plenty of uh, good ideas and time playing with that the background information one that's your relationship to the interviewee um, that paragraph kind of establishes you know what goes on outside of the paper like how, how do you know them how are you um, familiar with them and if you were not you know sort of the story of how you first met them right so in joey's case this would be introduced to my dad over a, a facetime call and seminar because um, he's an interesting dude um, so yeah those are the easier paragraphs to write this is the way i think you should um, consider uh, your body paragraphs you want to start or lead in or at the very least have towards the beginning the interviewees quote or or their story that they tell this should be a direct quote so then after that you can provide analysis and research possibly another quote as well so when it says relate the quote to the social construct, this is where you go back to your controlling theme. So if your controlling theme is that of growing up in rural Kansas, you talk about that, how, how that would have had an impact on her. I'm actually going to pull up a um, example so that you can see this. Okay, um, need to share it. This is an older one about about Leonard. So um, this one is really cool because it has um, some longer stories as well as shorter stories. You don't. I, I really wouldn't necessarily recommend doing a gigantic block quote, but in this one, it like it works. Um, this person knew Leonard from uh, CCD. So it says, Leonard had so many stories about his childhood and how his family was so close, but the one story he told me that caught my attention was about his toy truck he got from his uncle for his seventh birthday. He said, when I was seven, I got this toy truck from my uncle for my birthday. Maybe a little repetitive. It was bright red with white stripes and it just gleamed in the sunlight. I made sure that nobody touched my truck because I didn't want it to be scratched or ruined. Well, eight years later, I just got out of school and I arrived at my house when I saw my brothers outside playing with my toys and I didn't think anything of it until I got closer and saw that it was my toy truck that I had got eight years ago from my uncle for my birthday. The truck no longer gleamed in the sunlight like it used to. It was all dirty. It had scratches and dents all over it. Even though I was 15 years old, that was the problem. Was probably the maddest I've ever been in my life. That truck was my most treasured possession and it was ruined. I joked with him after the story saying, if they wouldn't have messed it up, then you could have been rich. And he just laughed. As he laughed, he showed that he really couldn't care less about money any, anymore. He also said, I couldn't stay mad at them too long because my family was so close. We hardly ever fought and we were family oriented. So if you look at this kind of like organization, what he did is he started with the interviewee's quote or story. He provided just a little bit of analysis, right, about why that might have been his most, you know, treasured possession, et cetera. Um, he didn't do research. Instead, he did another quote and included part of their conversation. So you see this, um, this way of writing is not set in stone. Body paragraphs do not have to go in this exact order at all. Um, body paragraphs are according to what you wish to include and not necessarily, um, you know, a rigid structure. Because the body paragraph is so um, open to interpretation, though, I get that that also means those of you who are not like um, a big creative writing source, this might be kind of hard, right? So if you look at this next paragraph, it's doing something different. It actually doesn't include a quote, um, but he just did a gigantic block quote, so I don't think that's a bad thing. He had a big family of nine kids counting him which back then was a huge family in the 40s and 50s 
when Leonard grew up, the national family out average family size was 3.65 kids. <laughs> but there is also the fact that Midwest families tend to be bigger in size than other families in different regions of the United States during this point in time. Also at this point in time, religion was a very big thing. His family was very religious. They prayed before every meal and went to church every weekend. So um, it, if you look at, at that, um, it's combining research with background information, but he's not necessarily using a quote there. Um, and in this paragraph, it sets up like his chores when he was in high school, and then it goes into a quote. The pay was just horrible. I was getting paid half as much as everybody else working there. But with my father being a hardworking man, he made me stay with it. And I eventually got the pay that I thought I should be getting. Leonard's desire to keep going in his job show how he came from a working class family because he never gave up. One of the first things that he did when he got his money was buy a television for his family so that they didn't have to go over to the neighbors anymore. I thought that this really showed how he was truly family oriented. After he'd bought the TV for his family, he bought his first car for $150. It was a 1953 Buick. So you can see here that the controlling theme is, is class. And you can also see that body paragraphs are what you want them to be and not necessarily a specific order. The key is this, you are supposed to weave quotes from the interviewee descriptive details that talk about how they say things and describe them, analysis for how it relates them to their community um, and society, and if there is space for it in that part, research. Some paragraphs will not really have research that doesn't feel like it's shoehorned in, but other portions will really be enhanced by research. Like if Leonard came from a family with 10 kids, knowing that 3.65 was the average, well, that's a pretty big difference. So that's worth knowing. I have in the um, uh, outline here four body paragraphs, but I think you will see from all of my examples, most people had more than four body paragraphs and most people decided what they wanted to do with their paragraph sizes. You'll note this, this student has paragraph sizes that are kind of all over the place and has written about a four page paper. So um, let me find my one last document. So um, if you look in this, how to organize your information for the investigative report, number four, can help you with that. Arrange the interview content so that answers flow naturally from one topic to the next. These might not necessarily be in the same order in which the replies were originally given. You also need to create bridging passages. You'll note that um, the student in the Leonard interview, what he did was he actually included part of their conversation to help bridge passages. And I recommend that, right? I mean, it, yes, it's about them, but you're, you interview them and you having a conversation is totally worthwhile um, to bring to their attention. So um, you'll also analyze what they've told you and occasionally use an outside source to confirm or deny it and show that your interviewee had a unique, unique human experience. So be sure you create commentary and talk after each story or quote your interviewee gives. That's going to help you connect their responses to their society in some way or another. So um, basically, your body paragraphs need to not necessarily be arranged chronologically, but be arranged in order of topic. So let's say your controlling theme is work. So you would maybe start with um, the work that they're currently doing or most recently retired from, and then maybe go back to their first job if you want and bring yourself back forward to the present. It does not have to be in chronological order. It does not have to be in reverse order, and it does not have to be in the order that you answered the questions in the interview. The important thing is that the quotes and information are there and that you've arranged them in a way that you think is, well, nice. 
and that's the key to this paper. It's supposed to be pretty. You know, when you're done, you're supposed to feel like it's, you know, lovely. Um, and, and that's my best advice for, for organizing it for you. In your textbook, um, they give you some ideas from, uh, for how to arrange your paragraphs as well. Um, I think we looked at that last week, but I might pull it up. I think it was like it, these these pages that are relevant to the investigative report are like sideways in this textbook so that makes it like a little bit harder to see <laughs> okay so it's not 207. So if you look um, in your textbook, this uh, Barbara joins the males example is really like cute and very sweet. Um, it's about this lady who, who got into real estate uh, back in a time when there weren't very many um, women agents. Um, and I highly recommend it. It's actually super duper cool. But what I was looking for, if I can find it here, is this. So basically you've got, um, this is page, let me find out. Looks like 195, 185. So you start with the sensory lead and you're gonna end with kind of a sensory, sensory conclusion. And in the middle we have facts and description. And you're arranging those paragraphs um, the best that you can. This is the sideways resource that I was talking about, where you say, what work have you done? You get their answer, you get the follow-up question and the analysis, and then you decide which of these actually end up in your paper. So this follow-up would end up in the paper, this research ends up in the paper, this research might end up in the paper. So it basically says, okay, of these responses, what do you want to include? How do you want to analyze it? And this is what you need to do as well, is you need to go through their responses and, and analyze those responses. How is this related to your controlling theme? If you would like to do that before you begin drafting, you can. If not, you can weave it into your draft, whichever you are the most comfortable with. So um, I'll take questions now on how to write body paragraphs. Anybody have any questions? I, I think it's a good idea to come with, with like creative writing themes, like um, talk about the mood, I guess. <laughs> yes, I mean, the creative writing um, is what I call the descriptive details. Um, and those should definitely be present um, in the interview um, and in your paper. If I go back to the example of Barbara Canfield, um, I, can, I can show you an example of that. And I highly recommend you look at the examples of um, the really nice, uh, versions that, that I've put in Schoology. So check this out. She laughs and clucks her tongue again, reminiscing a scene where a male coworker told her his thoughts on women. He was so huffed up and angry and he said to me, when these women go to work, they take food out of our baby's mouths. She lets the air out of her lungs and laughter ever after imitating this man in his stocky body, implying that she most likely didn't take him seriously then either. When my grandmother got married and started her family, it was completely accepted and encouraged by society to stay home and work as a full-time mother, wife, and housekeeper. In today's society, according to Amy Kelselman, women now constitute 46% of the total workforce. So a couple of things here. First of all, note how they really lead in to their research with who did it, right? Um, and provide some context. And whenever, they talk about Barbara, they actually lead in by describing her first, 
right? Like how she looks and what she's doing. And that's the creative writing aspect of it, right? Um, that's helpful. Here's a good example of a quote that's been broken up within a body paragraph. However, there is competition between men and women in the economic world. The good thing about real estate, my grandmother informs me, was that you earned what you could sell. My salary was based on my abilities and my abilities alone. So you have her talking about that. Um, I personally think that there's sometimes a, a bit heavy on the research here, um, but the quotes here are really wonderful and so are their, their descriptions of her. Um, so yeah, the, the descriptions are really supposed to help us understand what this person is like in real life. And if you didn't do your interview, what you can do is um, kind of describe other things, but like the way they responded or how they sounded, or if you can picture them sitting in their favorite chair, things like that. What other questions do we have? My suggestion with this is one that I don't give to any of the other papers. I suggest that you have like a loose idea of what quote you want to use for each like topic or section. And then I suggest just writing, you know, like kind of letting it, letting it flow, letting it uh, get, get creative with you, um, which is not normally my recommendation. I'm normally like, you need to structure this very carefully before you write it. With this one, I'm like, know the quote you're going to use and put the, quotes in the order that you would like to talk about them. But other than that, just kind of write and see what comes out. <laughs> Anything else you got enough to draft on? Yeah, I think we're good. Awesome.